This video demonstrates voice over IP stress testing using two SIP video endpoints. And what I have here is the default five band scenario in KMAX, but I'm going to load a specialized scenario just for this purpose. It's the voice over IP stress test four band. And if we look here, we can see a preview of what we're gonna get when we load it. I'll load this scenario and I will assign the A to B direction uh, to go from RE0 to RE1 on the back of the uh, KMAX unit. And you can see the end-to-end -end diagram behind the control shows you what's happening. On the left side, we have a remote SIP IP phone, and in this case, I'm only using it to send a video stream. The video RTP stream goes through KMAX and to my workstation, which is running a SIP phone and a SIP proxy. And this is what I'm seeing on my end, receiving the RTP video stream. It's a looped uh, video animation. And in the middle here is KMAX. It's a layer two device that's basically invisible to the two IP phones. It's sort of a bump on the wire. As packets flow through KMAX, we can classify those packets into different types based on the uh, destination ports and the type, whether it's UDP or TCP. And we'll separate those packets into different bands. There'll be an RTP band, an RTCP band, and a SIP signaling band. So if we click on the middle here, the first thing I'm gonna do is configure the classifier the classifier filters packets and send the, sends them to different flows. Uh, Pre-configured here, we have a filter to perform matching on RTP UDP packets. Uh, in this case, they are UDP packets going to destination port 50012. If you needed to change that, you could edit this filter, go to the IP port subfilter, and then change the port number if you need to. If this filter doesn't match, then we have a filter that matches against RTCP data, which goes to a port number that's one greater. And finally, we have a filter that triggers on SIP signaling, which consists of TCP streams going to destination port 5060. So I'm going to enable the classifier. And then you can see immediately the packet gauges light up, indicating the um, streams that we're receiving. This band will receive the RTP video streams. This band will receive the RTCP streams. And the final band will get the SIP signaling. In the other direction, from my receive endpoint to the server, I'm not interested in those streams. So I'm just going to bypass the network entirely. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, try some of these impairments. First, the delay node. I'll enable that. And what I can do is try abruptly adding a two-second delay. So let's see what happen, ha happens to the video when I do that. The video freezes for about two seconds and then resumes. And the idea is this RTP receiver endpoint needs to be robust enough to be able to deal with that sudden dropout of packets for two seconds. If I revert back to no delay, then we can see that the receiver has handled that very nicely. There's no major glitch in the video. Now, in addition for the delay node, I can add um, jitter. And perhaps I'll add a 100% chance of adding jitter with a uniform distribution. anywhere from 0 to 0.2 seconds. Now in this case we do not have packet reordering so the packets are going to be staggered but not necessarily reordered and the receiver is handing that reasonably well. Oh, we had a brief uh, drop out there. But things can get more challenging for this receiver if we click this checkbox to enable packet reordering. So now packets are potentially going to come in out of order 
and the receiver is going to need to be able to handle this situation. Maybe I'll boost the possible upper value to 0.4 seconds and and what's probably happened is the receiver has automatically adapted its input cue so that it can absorb the extra jitter. Okay, so let's disable this node and exit. And we'll test duplication. Enable the node and I can duplicate say 10% of all packets. And this particular endpoint is very good about rejecting uh, duplicate packets. If I go all the way up to 100% duplicated packets, it's clear that this endpoint uh, simply discards any duplicated packets it receives. So that's kind of a sanity check that all receivers should be able to satisfy. So if we go back down to zero and I d disable this node, uh, next uh, what I'm going to do is bring up the alter node and select packet corruption. I'm going to corrupt only the bits in the Ethernet payload, not the bits in the Ethernet header. And I'll start adding uh, bit corruption, say starting with 3% of all packets to be corrupted. A random bit will be uh, flipped as soon as I enable the node. and we see a little stuttering and a little blockiness, block artifacts, but the receiver seems to be handling it reasonably well. Now the critical thing is to increase the uh, corruption significantly so that half of all packets now have a random bit flipped and the receiver sh should still be able to handle it reasonably well um, as gracefully as possible and critically not crashing. Uh, the key thing to test here is that when I turn the corruption probability back to zero, the receiver should immediately snap back to normal operation. So, so far this receiver is, is passing reasonably well. Uh, I'll then uh, demonstrate the rate limiter. Now this stream is coming in with a bit rate of somewhere around uh, 100 kilobits per second. So if I impose a maximum bit rate of 200 kilobits per second, we won't see uh, much change at all. Now as I go down to 100 kilobits per second, now um, the bit rate is going to be constrained. And here we have a situation where the queue length uh, size is 64 packets maximum. And because we're constraining the bit rate, the queue is building up, and when it exceeds 64 packets, it drops a packet. So you can see here packets are dropping and the queue has maxed out, the actual instantaneous queue level has maxed out to about 64 packets. Now if I um, If I go in here, I can switch between bit clocking or token bucket. Now, right now, what we're doing is we're simulating a low bit rate WAN connection. So the WAN, the simulated WAN is capable of supporting only 100 kilobits per second. And I can tweak this to see uh, what level of uh, WAN limitation is, is going to affect the, uh, the bit rate. It looks like around... Um, Looks like around 150 kilobits about matches what the bit rate is that the uh, the sender is is uh, sending us. Now what I can do is change to token bu bucket, and the difference is bit clocking simulates a WAN bit for bit, whereas token bucket only enforces a average bit rate over a certain period of time. Now when I select token bucket, I'm going to select token bucket and a token bucket size of 20,000 bytes. And what's going to happen is if I uh, flush things, 
then we're going to wait for the token bucket to drain. And until the token bucket drains, 100% uh, of the bandwidth is allowed through. But once the token bucket fills up, then we become constrained to the target rate bit rate that I've set here. If I go with a smaller target bit rate and then flush things, you'll see that we get uh, pretty much full bit rate until the token bucket drains, and then we start building up our input queue. And if I disable the rate limiter and exit, Another thing we can do that's helpful in testing is uh, A-B comparison. So for instance, if I were to load the drop node and drop, say, 10% of packets, we get quite a bit of breakup. And then what I can do is use this bypass switch to either bypass all impairments or go through the impairment network. If I bypass, we should see no degradation. And then if I turn off the bypass switch, now we're going through the impairments and we can see the impairments uh, kick in. That's quite useful for testing. I can then disable that node. Now after doing a, a lot of testing, it's oftentimes useful to look at statistics. And I can do that by going here to the uh, table or chart. If I click on the table, Up comes the table, and in the columns, I can display uh, flows or interfaces. And so, for instance, I'm interested in the video RTP stream from server to client. That would be this one. And I can see the various uh, metrics that uh, have been gathered uh, since the start of testing. Now, the, the units I'm going to be looking at are, in this case, total packets and I'm going to select fixed for the way that the numbers are being displayed. So we can see that the drop node has dropped 51 packets to date. We can see the number of packets uh, duplicated, the number of packets dropped in the rate limiter once the rate limiter queue has filled up, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, in fact, down here when we were uh, testing excessive jitter, we also reordered packets and there were a number of packets reordered. Um, we can also get uh, metrics for uh, our SIP signaling, not much there. Also metrics for the two interfaces, the interface on the left and the right. So these are quite helpful when um, digging down deeper uh, and looking at uh, uh, more, more information about what has been impaired. Going back to the net, net graph page. And it's also useful to uh, use this dual bypass button to bypass both directions at the same time. Uh, it's also useful for A to B testing as well. Going back to the dashboard. Well, once again, this is our topology. And that concludes this uh, tutorial for voice over IP stress testing.